Hello everybody! Welcome to Katie Moonchild's world. This is Katie. You are at Saturday Solutions where we try to find some suggestion and solutions for our current situation to get to our hopes and dreams um, as we are going through this challenging period in history. It's challenging for so very, 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 very many ways. So, what we do here, um, it's to help find you some strength, some solutions, uh, something to aspire to, um, just in case you don't have anything to aspire to right now. <laughs> uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. Um, Buried, of course, entertainment purposes only. First thing we're going to do is look at our current situation. And to do that, we are using the um, Mystical Shaman deck. Beautiful deck, highly recommend it, by Colette Baron Reed. This tells us what our current situation is. I have shuffled and shuffled and shuffled these cards because this is the third time I've started this video. <laughs> I keep getting phone calls that turn it off. I finally got smart and we're in, in uh, airplane mode so I can do this right. Uh, let's get us a good card here. What is a good card for us, please, Spirit? Well, tell us what we need to know for our current situation. Okay, we'll take that one. The drum. So you don't need it back there. Let's put it up here in the hot seat so you can look at it nice and close. Got a full moon coming this week. Obviously, that's what's behind that drum. Would you look at the shaman? He's looking up at that drum. He's like almost in a trance as the light comes down through the drum and into him. Pretty dark right here. Is this um, our situation? Or is this the difference between the new moon that we just had and the full moon coming up? Oh, full moon's what? Tomorrow? Next day? For the moon, anyway. Is it a full moon or a new moon? I'm sorry. I am lost today. I don't know where my brain is at. <laughs> anyway, the moon lunar change is happening this weekend. So, uh, as far as I know, it's happening tonight, Saturday night. So, here we go. Yeah, and I ended up with another card. A second card. This one is about drumming and trancing and, and finding your your spiritual aptitude. That's the word I'm looking for. Your spiritual aptitude. Not your spiritual ability. But your spiritual aptitude. That means you're learning too. Because we all are. This card is asking you what you're willing to sacrifice. To bring in abundance and a wiggly screen. To bring in abundance. Both of these cards. This is what we're being asked. Prices are getting ready to go up. It's fantastic. Oil production is being reduced. To drive oil prices up. Because it's about to get cold. In the northern hemisphere. All I have to say is. Karma. Folks. Karma. Wait. Wait it out. Get ready. Your gas prices are going to go up. So your heating prices are going to go up. So my suggestion is you buy blankets and buy layers of clothing. Get a generator if you need to. Figure out a way around it. 
figure out a way to survive, keep warm, and function without all that oil. And if that means you have to park your car most of the time, park your car. This is Gaia talking to us as well. This only will bring in force what they don't want, what they think they're going to be. Um, they're so short-sighted, all they can see is the, the big price gouging and get-rich-quick shit that they can pull. Excuse my... I said shit. I'm sorry. And I said it again. Um, they're not, they're, they're th their thinking is short-sighted because all this does is prove how much we need green energy and to get off fossil fuels so that they no longer can control who lives or dies because of how cold it is or how much money you have or don't have whether you can afford heating oil or not. That is, that time is over. And it's about damn time. But to get there, to get to that point, we're going to have to sacrifice some stuff. So sacrifice it. You, you look in her hand. Whoop, let's just knock the card over. You look in her hand up here. What is that? You know, is that food? Is it flowers? She looks like she's pretty happy. She's pretty covered with abundance to me. Headdress is quite fancy. Come on. There we go. Quite fancy. You notice the 44 card? Yeah. I didn't bring up the number of the last card because that's the number six. The number six? <laughs> it's about harmony. Believe it or not, the drumming card brings about harmony. It's telling you do transful drumming. Make a sound. Don't be silent. Be heard. Be heard. It's about cooperation and it's about healing. This drumming card is about healing. So if you do meditations, you might try doing some drumming as a part of your meditation to bring you into the space. I think you will find it, oh, pardon me, very rewarding. There is a reason why the indigenous people do it and have done it for millennia on millennia. You know, this modern civilized attitude that we have is time <laughs> to uh, go back to some of the elemental ways. Pay attention to the elements. And that's what this card is saying. So in your drumming, be prepared to sacrifice. It's okay, because we want to get to the goal of where we want to be. So let's find out where that is. This is the Shamanic Dreams by Colette Baron reed And the next one that I will use is the Enchanted Map deck by Colette Baron reed The three decks work so beautifully together to tell us what our, basically what our past, present, and future are. Um, it's more like, what is our past? What is our, what's our future? And how do we get there? So we've been drumming and sacrificing like crazy in the past. Being loud, being vocal, protesting. Um, yeah. So, let's take this top card right here. Oh, what a fantastic card. Here's your solution. Do not ever, ever, ever underestimate the power of community and gathering together in a, a number. Whether that number is one or three or 3,000, changes happen in the power of community. 
So when the community is gathering, I have a meeting in my neighborhood actually um, for political outreach uh, that I am probably going to go to. Now, I don't go to public events like that. This is, has to do with um, Roe v. Wade and what we need to do to bring... I live in Arizona, y'all. It's like right now it's totally illegal for no matter what. You can't have an abortion here right now, which is totally confusing the crap out of doctors, everyone. What's considered an abortion? What's considered a miscarriage? And what can, is considered a medically, a medical emergency uh, that needs to be done for the life of the mother? It's like the life of the mother, all she is, is the oven. Put that bread in the oven. Oh, yeah, you got to use her to make the bread, too, but uh, that's minor. She's just the oven that bakes it. That's all we need her for. Otherwise, she's useless. Well, ladies, I think it's time we show how useless we are. Hey, I don't cook for you. I don't clean for you no more. And hey, baby, I ain't going to be your friend in bed. Until you show me some respect as a human being like you do your buddies. That's my attitude. But hey, I said this wasn't going to be political. It is political. Gathering around in the power of community is where our strength is. It's where the love is. It is where there is absolutely no doubt. This is an eight card. It is the card of accomplishment action and mastery. And of course, that happens in community. So we want to be considered a community. The people, the poor, the elderly, the needy. We have power of community, y'all. We just don't organize. We're too busy, busy being a victim to realize that our number is our power and our number is the largest number of people on the face of this earth. The needy, the elderly, and the poor. Think about that. You want a voting block? You politicians are absolute total fools that do not focus on what the needy, the elderly, and the poor need. It will lose you an election if you do not pay attention to us. And that is me vocalizing as my part, as me being a part of my community. How do we get from sacrificing to standing up and saying no more? That's it, I'm done. How do we get from one place to the other? like that. Here comes the map. Here comes the map. I think you're finding as I'm getting more and more comfortable with being here on YouTube and doing this, uh, I'm getting more and more comfortable with vocalizing my opinions on things. Before I didn't want to run off. I was afraid of running subscribers off. Uh, but now I'm looking for like-minded people. So if you don't think like me, you don't like what I have to say, that's okay. That's fine. You can watch someone else. It's okay. You know, there's at least two or three other channels on YouTube that you can watch. Now, if you do like this, you like what I'm saying, it's giving you answers, and you think somebody else might like this, press that like button and share it with them. Tell them about it. Send them a link. And then subscribe so that you can come back next time um, I do this. I do this every Saturday. I do a live stream every Wednesday for two hours. That is personal readings and political readings. First hour is a little bit of a, I don't know, education section. It's information. Then I also do a live stream on Thursdays called the Lightworkers Roundtable where I have guests other card readers, psychics, members of the chats, all from this community. 
people that you all, most of you all know real well, unless you're new here. And if you're new here, I think you will find them all very interesting, very kind, very loving, and uh, fascinating people. So, without ado, how do we get banging our drone and sacrificing to voicing our opinion as a, the power of the community as a whole in a gathering? Okay. <laughs> Apparently we do that by flying. Oh, we got another card too. We've got two of these. Two from the map. So I'll move that back down here. We have flying and peaks of joy. Now, the reason I'm showing those to you both at the same time instead of one at a time, they are so connected. <laughs> you will fly when you find your peaks of joy. In those peaks of joy is transformation. As you transform, you will soar. You will not just fly. You will be out of the maze. You will be soaring. Ride that merry-go-round horse, that fairy, the unicorn. Actually, that's a unicorn. That is a merry-go-round Pegasus. Looks like there's a little fairy though here. See right there, or is that a butterfly as well? Don't get it too close. What is that? It is something dragonfly, fairy, something, and it has a trail of little leaves coming out from behind it. We've got storm clouds on the horizon back here, but they're going to end because look at all the sunshine and look at the rainbow that is starting to form. It goes clear up into the horse. This being a two card, it's about duality, partnerships and balance. So we got to find our balance. Find your balance, find your peaks of joy. Find those things that totally elate you. Not just make you feel passionate, but elation. That is a peak of joy. That is how you're going to find the collective. Because we're all hanging out on our peaks. Because the web goes from peak to peak to peak to peak to peak. Um, if you look at a lot of the ley lines... If there's not a mountain peak there, they created it. The Great Pyramid, for instance. Okay? So, this reading is telling us that if we, we really need to, to find that happiness, that joy, so that the changes and those things that are being sent our way to try to put us into a down place and to hold us back, make us feel feared, afraid. Um, if you're focused on that peak of joy, and you will soar. It happens automatically. Um, the more focused you are on that thing that makes you absolutely elated in life, that automatically raises your vibes and helps you to soar. Wow. So basically what this reading is saying, we've been crying and vocalizing and saying, what the heck, for so long now that we've been beating a drum that feels like we've been beating an empty drum. It's not empty drum. It's being heard. It's being heard by others in the collective that are doing and feeling the same thing. So... We are asked to sacrifice a few things. Maybe some money, maybe some food, maybe some of our comforts. But that's okay because in the end, what the payment back, what we will be getting back is gigantic in abundance. Because we'll be flying and soaring in joy. Can you imagine that? Not being afraid anymore. 
not being concerned or worried about where the next bill's going to get paid from and just fly. Just be looking above, looking down on it and going, hmm, I was worried about that. Why? When the universe always has my back, I'm always protected. So what is this chakra telling us? I love it when we get this. We are not believing we are limitless. And if one thing shows you, when your chakras are all spinning, whether they're spinning in harmony or not, that's your proof of how limitless you are. Believe it or not, you are, oh man. Sorry, I have my phone plugged in. I'm gonna do this. I keep hitting the cord. So you're limitless. You are. You are unlimited. Please do not ever forget that. You are unlimited. But what a chakra to be blocked. That is saying our, all of our chakras are out of alignment here. This is the soul star chakra. It is the chakra source for infinite energy. Your connection with spirit and your spiritual energy of the universe. And it's all encompassing. It is all of your chakras. All of them buzzing. All of them humming. And you'll see just in the fluctuations in the colors, how they rise and fall. That is what happens with your chakras as they're buzzing. As they're in, in harmony. As they're working and doing what they're supposed to do with your energy. When it's balanced, you're feeling cosmic connectiveness, connectiveness with everything. Even your cup of coffee. And you view limitations <laughs> as an illusion. Because you know you can blast through that limitation. And your commitment to spiritual purpose. Being here, shining your light and expanding that light as far and as outreaching as you can. And through this, you re acquire a transcendence, require, acquire a transcendence, a zest for life and the ability to assist your past life memories. It's interesting when you're expanded into your unlimited self, you can see where you have limited yourself with your beliefs. Um, huh. Wow. When it is out of balance, you're restless. Hmm, I've been having a terrible time sleeping lately. And yeah, you feel a need for grounding. Oh my goodness. Um, Dali from... Wolf Girl Oracle and I, on Thursday night on the Lightworkers Roundtable, we talked about what do you do for grounding? How do you, how do you settle yourself? How do you find that place, that origin, pl origin place? And we talked about earthing and grounding. And you need to do that. You're going to find that when you're not feeling limitless, you need that really bad. Because there's, you're, all of your chakras are kind of like, like a car that is not, uh, that's out of tune. It's going to burn more oil, more oil and it's going to burn more gas. When you are not fine-tuned and your chakras are not fine-tuned and running together, you are going to burn more energy. And you're not going to get as far. So it's very similar to the energy in a car. You um, have a lack of purpose when it's out of balance. And you're full of anxiety because you don't have a purpose. If you don't have a purpose and something to work towards, um, it makes you flail. Uh, it, it's hard. It's very, very difficult. Um, and you have anxiety because you aren't really sure what your life path is. And because of that anxiety and your ego, you find yourself being very concerned with, well, how do I find out what my life path is? When all you need to do is just relax. 
breathe, and live, and you will find it. Your life path comes to you. You don't go to it. So you feel isolated, and you do because of this. You will isolate yourself. Don't go there. Don't go there. We want to be a part of the collective. Our power is in the collective, not in isolation. The only time you need to isolate is to go within, to find your power by going deep within your higher self, to talk with your higher self. Okay, that's the only time you need isolation. Now, the crystals for you to use for this, to help heal this. Herderite. Um, I believe I don't have an herderite. I do have a chakra card that talk. I do have a crystal card that talks about herderite. Um, ah, there you go. Clear quartz. Clear quartz. Everybody can find that. That's everywhere. A Herkimer diamond. I have one of those here too somewhere. Here it is. It's not a very good one. But you see it's got the phantoms inside there? That is a Herkimer diamond. It's a form of clear quartz also. But it has those little black specks. Those little black specks are all down inside there too. Those are called phantoms. So that's a Herkimer diamond. And then, last but not least, Rainbow Moonstone, the lower stone here. This is Rainbow Moonstone. It's that white iridescent stone. Now, the affirmations are a little bit longer than what you're used to in, in this reading. Um, this is really important. If you need to pause to write this down, that's fine. I have a deep commitment to my spiritual purpose. Tell yourself that when you look in the mirror and believe it with all your heart because you do have a deep commitment to your spiritual purpose. I acknowledge I am a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being living the human experience. Never forget that. You are not a human first. I respond to the calling of my soul. Do you have things that hit you in, in your gut, in the back of your mind, um, little whispers in your ear that try to point you in certain directions? What this card is telling you, listen to that. Listen to that. That's your higher self. Your conscience is your higher self. There's your integrity, your decency, your kindness, your love. I am I embody universal peace, which if you do uh, the acknowledge of being a spiritual being and you respond to the calling of your soul, you automatically are embodying universal peace. It just goes with it because the uh, satisfaction and the calm that comes with the knowing is phenomenal. I allow the divine to enter and transform my life. How many of you will pray for something and then you really are afraid how it's going to come to you? So you're like... Mm. Yeah, but don't do it this way. I want it this way. So you take it back. And when you take it back from a prayer, usually we screw it up royal. I'm turning this thing around. So you're not looking at the butt in skiing. Um, and then tell yourself, I allow the divine to enter and transform my life. But to do that, you have to turn over your life. To the divine. That means you're giving up your control. Or your desire. Or your false desire. Or false belief. That you have that control. You don't. Um, 
Anytime you get focused in control, check yourself. That's your ego talking. I allow the divine to enter and transform my life. There will be very th things you love that were your favorites, foods, television shows, music, um, people. They just don't interest you like they did. Old TV shows that you loved for years, all of a sudden you have no interest in watching them at all. Maybe you were a horror movie fan in October, and now all of a sudden all you want to watch about are... Um, <laughs> falling in love in the fall kind of shows and not the creepy the cre creepy creepy scary stuff it's because you have the ability to tap the energy of the universe so tell yourself if you don't tell yourself anything else here tell yourself i have the ability to tap the universe which is limitless and so am i or thus, so am I. Let's try that once again. I have the ability to tap the energy of the universe, which is limitless. And thus, so am I. Wow. It's pretty interesting. Interesting reading. Let's see what a general message is from Spirit is for us. Being called lightly to use the Earthcraft Oracle for this. This is the deck. You'll find all the links for these decks, by the way, in my in the description box below the video. In case you want to look at them closer. I am an Amazon Associates affiliate. Okay, so I need to tell you that if you do purchase from using that link, if you purchase anything, I will get a commission from it, but it will not make a difference in the price that you pay whatsoever. It just gives my channel a couple pennies, and I mean that quite literally, a couple pennies. Like, I might make 50 cents off of a deck that you order. Okay, just saying. If you, buy, if you order a $20 deck... Um, someone ordered a $20 deck last month. I get a check for 57 cents this month. <laughs> I'm going to get rich quick. Anyway, our card. Don't worry about all of this. You'll keep your limitless, or your unlimited being that you are, because that's who you are. Whether you believe it or not, you really are that. You will keep that. Don't worry about losing that. Don't worry about being a part of the collective and how much you got to sacrifice and what are my peaks of joy. And just contact your ancestors. Talk to the ancients. Talk to those that came before you. Whether they are alive or no longer on this side of the veil. They will answer you. They will come to you. They may come to you in many forms. As this picture shows, we have people, we have animals, and we have plants, and we're birds. Know that the ancients and these ancestors, when they come to you, they will come to you in your heart, not your head. And they will come to you in your dreams, through your ears and your third eye. You see this person here that is thinking about the ancestors. The spiral of time and the spiral of life is in, focused in the center of the heart on this person. Keep yourself focused on expanding your heart. Keep yourself focused on expanding your heart. That expands your light, that expands your love, and that also keeps you in balance. When you cannot do that, practice grounding. Go outside, take your shoes off, put your feet in the grass. If you can dig your toes down into the ground, do it. I make mud 
and I play with my toes in the mud so that it gets in between all my toes and gets all squishy. But that grounds me to this earth that I'm standing on. And all of a sudden, things aren't so scary. All that that's out there, that's there trying to make you feel afraid. You can shut it out. Most of that is propaganda and hype. And that's on both sides, by the way. So that's what this card is reminding us. Talk to those who came before. They've been through the hard times. You have grandparents and stuff that were... Uh, parents and grandparents that were involved in World War II. They were involved in the Great Depression. Um, may not have been involved in the Spanish flu, but they been, were involved in polio and measles. And, you know, those that survived the last three years, those are the wise ones. Those are who you need to talk to. Those, those are the ones who have our answers. Because they've already lived it. Their life was hard. They were the ones that worked so hard to make life easier for us. So that we could be spoiled. And. Yeah. Useless in a way. Um, spoiled and lost. So let's find out from the untethered soul. What we need to know. This This deck. Is very, very minimalist. It's four categories to choose from. That's the back of the card. That is the only image on the card, is the back of the card. So, what's our message? Okay. Does that pull the card out of the center and one sticks up? So, what the card says. Who is having all these physical, emotional, and mental experiences? Notice who is experiencing the experience. Realize that you, the experiencer, have a certain quality. And that quality is awareness, consciousness, and intuitive sense of, of existence. You exist regardless of your thoughts or no thoughts. This is explaining to you what I what that card meant about you being um, a human, uh, about being a spirit living a human existence. This is putting it into very basic terms. It's asking you to ask yourself, who is having all of these physical, emotional, and mental experiences? notice who it is is it the people around you that trigger that or is it you realize that you are the experiencer you have a certain quality and that quality is awareness consciousness which is an intuitive sense of existence you're an empath you exist regardless of whether you're in meditation, focused on your thoughts, whether you're talking, or whether you're totally asleep. Whether you're, and when I mean totally asleep, I'm talking like surgically asleep. And some of us are walking through life completely asleep. So this card is asking you to ask yourself. It's telling you, telling us, we need to ask ourselves the difficult questions. And then those answers that come to us, we need to work on. So if that means that you've got to work on a trauma or a crisis that happened in your life, you need to do some shadow work. Get a journal, shadow work journal, and start page one. I highly recommend it. You will not be sorry. Not an easy thing to do. 
Um, if you do have mental disorders like OCD, uh, bipolar disorder, um, borderline personality disorder, some of those more serious that where you confronting difficult things can cause you deep pain and depression. Do not go into shadow work without a professional's knowledge, advice, and monitoring. And when I say a professional, I mean a licensed practicing psychology, psychiatry, counseling, or therapist. Who is having all these physical, emotional, and mental experiences? It's you. Notice who is experiencing the experience. And I'm going to add one in there. Realize that you, the experiencer, you have a certain quality. So you can ask yourself, why am I experiencing this? And that improves the quality of your awareness, your consciousness, and your intuitive sense of existence. You belong here. You have a space here. And no matter what, you do exist. Even if you try really hide, hard to hide in the shadows, become the hermit. Guess what? You matter. You do exist. And people do know about you. They pray about you. They care about you. And they love you. Wow. I want to do one more card. I'm kind of feeling like we need a therapy card today. So I am just going to grab a therapist card. See if I can make you really, 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 really dizzy. While I pull them out from behind the camera. There we go. Or in front of the camera. Oh my gosh, this is bad. Okay. Apparently this week I got to spend some time with my new equipment. <laughs> I have a really nice webcam. Um, it's supposed to have, it's even have a wide angle view so that I don't have to stack the cards all on top of each other so you can see. Just gotta set it up right. Bear with me, y'all. I'm trying. Therapets card. And I'm gonna just pull it out of the middle. This is a gigantic deck, so let's see. Let's pull the center out. See how that card just came right up right there? That's our card. You're enough. Today, tomorrow, and always. Hey, that's great to leave us on. That's a perfect card to leave us on. That doesn't fit because it's such a big card. It doesn't fit in the slot there. I'm going to tell you right now. Thank you very much for being here. Don't ever doubt that you're enough. You're enough. I love you. I am so happy you're here with me today. And I will see you again and again and again. I know that. Thank you. Uh you like what you see, subscribe, share, all that stuff, you know. But I'm going to send you on your way now. I want you to have the best weekend, the best week. Don't worry, don't be afraid. And if you get worried and you get afraid, there's a lot of us here that can help you. And if you're looking for someone in particular, go to my playlist of the Lightworkers Roundtable. There's about 20, 21 people there. Uh, that all do very talented things. They're all there as a resource for you for help. So, please, please use that resource. Now, as you go on your way, 
Have a great weekend. Be kind to one another. Be kind to those that aren't kind to you. But most of all, watch out. And be kind to yourself. You're part of a really beautiful, wonderful community um, and collective. We love you. We want to keep you around. So, with that, I send ya. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye now.